Aquí en Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota y estamos ya en el último segmento de este show. Eh, y vamos a hablar ahora con una de mis colegas, Lorena Sweet Back to English, porque ahora estamos hablando con mis colegas, Lauren Fix. ¿Cómo estás, Lauren? Great, ¿cómo estás? Excelente, gracias. Y la última vez que nos vimos, nos vimos en nuestro futuro por un psíquico en Puerto Rico. Sí, eso fue muy interesante. Estoy feliz de tener la oportunidad. Sí, ¿hubo algo bueno para ti desde entonces? Sí, yo he estado testando en muchos vehículos, hay muchas cosas interesantes que pasan en la industria del automóvil. Parece que el diésel está volviendo a volver a los Estados Unidos en forma de masa, como en el auto show. Estoy muy emocionado por la próxima semana. Yeah, that's that's really great. And the reason we have uh, Lauren uh, here as a guest, uh, uh, Lauren uh, is uh, the founder of uh, the Car Coach, right? Uh, Lauren, can you please tell us about all the yes. publications so our audience can uh, check out what you're doing? Sure. Uh, I work with the Weather Channel. So if you watch the Weather Channel, uh, I do a segment there uh, called Ready uh, Weather Ready. If the weather does affect your car. Uh, I also uh, on my Fox Business Channel. You can catch me on AOL Autos as well as Time Warner Cable, if you get that. If not, you can go to my website at lorenfix.com. And, of course, I always tweet. I'm at Lauren Fix, so things work well. Yeah, exactly. So the reason, I, well, speaking of, of that, I, the reason I, I called you was exactly that, because I catch one of your tweets and your, your postings on uh, Facebook, Twitter, about tips about co go, uh, buying cars. And uh, in the previous segment, we have um, Chris Sutton from J.D. Power and Associates talking about the, the Customer Satisfaction Index for this year. And uh, that's something that caught my attention and put uh, two and two together. So, um, what, what can you please share some of your or your tips when on buying a new car? Definitely, the visit to the dealership is one of the aspects after you do the purchase. But uh, can you please tell us what uh, what are your your tips on this, please? Okay, my number one thing is, and this is true no matter you're male, female, or no matter what, is when you walk in a dealership, no matter how much training they get. And I used to be a dealer trainer, so I'm very aware of the training. Because we train the dealers about the people that were coming in, what kind of cars they are currently driving, and what their competition is. They have been trained. But that doesn't stop every salesperson when you walk in the dealership to first say to you, uh, are you buying or selling? Uh, you, know, you know, selling as a car, are you going to lease? How much is your payment a month? The worst thing you can tell any salesperson is if you're buying or leasing and what you're, what, how much you can afford a month. You want to set that, that aside. Why is that? Well, because they'll qual they'll pre-qualify you in your he in their head because they know how much money they can make off of each car. So if I can get you into a car that's fully loaded that might be less of a car that you than you need, then I make a bigger profit margin, and the sales guys make commission. And I'm not saying they're bad people because I I know the industry well, and it's about business. It's about the almighty dollar. Yeah, it's about making money, so, right? <laughs> right, right. So the first thing you should take people when you go to buy a car, and if you're buying or leasing, you know what, I don't know yet. It depends on the vehicle I choose. Now yeah. you've diffused the first question. and say, well, you must have an idea how much you want to spend a month. Yeah, I do, but I want to test drive the car first. So don't feel pressured. You never want buyer's remorse. You buy a car, you're going to have it for like three years. At least, so, yeah. And it's terrible because if you hate the car, you're done. So I just tell people... Always take a car for a test drive. Even if you think it's the hottest, coolest thing out there and you had the previous generation, take it for a drive because visibility makes a difference. It's not going to get better the more you own it. Seating comfort, priority. If you're not comfortable in the seat when you first get in it, well, no, completely different. I know. This is not your car. Buy another car. I mean, yeah. I, I, I particularly like the vehicle that I sit in. I have a Mini Cooper. People hate Some people hate it. I love it. But, you know, that's <laughs> why there's a thousand naked models out there to choose from. Exactly. So that's the big thing. So, like, like the, the monthly payment number is really uh, more a catch than a, a good offer to you, right? Because they can adjust the financing uh, to make you actually pay more than you would uh, in another deal. Absolutely. And remember that even if you lease, it is negotiable. The lease number is negotiable. They say it's 250 a month. You say, you know what, I can, I can only do 225 That's it. They'll make it work. But the interest rate could be higher. You gotta be real careful because they're not the ones taking the hit when they lower the rate. It's you that's gonna get it. Either the term is longer or there's a sometimes there's a payment at the end of a lease. So while the number seems good, that's not a very smart way to go. And if you're gonna purchase the car, you don't want to go out more than five years. I mean, if you're really gonna keep that car a long time, five years is fine. But it gets real expensive. So 
you know, it's really important to look at certified pre-owned options. They can get a lot of car for your money, let somebody else take the initial depreciation, and that's really a great way to go. Also, if you're if you have a trade, you own a car, sort your trade out separately. You can go to AutoTrader.com or Craigslist or eBay Motors. I found if other people have found that it's best to sell that vehicle yourself. That way, it's a great deal when you go to buy or lease. There's yeah, no so, trade yeah. in. There's so, moving around in those numbers. Exactly. Social media has helped on that, and I, obviously you have to be careful and like take your precautions with that. But I, um, that's a, a good way of uh, putting a couple hundred, maybe more, in your pocket when you are going and, and do the and buy the new car. Uh, the other thing, yeah, do totally. the research, and they're like, so, I mean, it can, this can be overwhelming. I read a study recently that uh, people who go and buy a car consult like about 18 websites before going to to make a purchase. Uh, that can be a little a bit lot overwhelming, of right? So what's your recommendation well, on that? It is. Well, what the first thing I always recommend people do is I like websites like TrueCar.com or Edmunds.com because they're the ones that are actually taking the actual information. When you buy a car and you sell a car, that information goes to the Department of Motor Vehicles. That information has been keyed in by a few companies that, share, that also share their services with other websites. They sell the service. Edmunds is one of them. I've been there. I've seen them keying in information. I know TrueCar does the same. But they'll also give you, uh, like TrueCar, for example, gives you like a, a bell curve. And they'll say, here at the end are people that paid well below the price that it could be. Here's the middle, the average price being sold, and here's people that paid retail. And by the way, you never want to pay retail. Never pay the number on the window. Now, I don't care if it's the coolest no, what's, what's that number there for? <laughs> you know what? They call it, no, I, I, I need to tell you this, this is the truth. They call it a lay down in the business. Yeah. Uh, I, have a, I have a book called Lauren Fix's Guide to Loving Your Car, and I wrote down all the terminology that we use on the dealer side. Oh, my And God. I don't have a dealership, but they call it a lay down. If you walk in, and they go, that's the price on the window, and they just bought a, a new car, and I, I went to the dealer, and I know the dealer, and he said, the price is on the window. I said, you serious? You're going to call me a lay down? And he looked right <laughs> at me. forgot I knew the term. Yeah. And I was able to bring them down on price. But wow, that's, that's okay, Rico. I mean, and it really makes sense. And be careful with leasing, too. If you drive between 10 and 15,000 miles a year, a lease makes sense. Yeah. Less than 10,000 or over 15, buy the car. You will get hurt. You will leave money on the table. Excellent, um, Lauren. I, it's it's amazing, like the amount of information that you have and, and your, your knowledge and all that. Maybe we can do a whole show sometime. But unfortunately, this I time would love it. we are running out of, uh, of time right now. But uh, again, can you please, Lauren Fix? Uh, can you tell us uh, briefly where we can find more about you? You can find me at l a u r e n f i x dot com. That's Lauren Fix. That's my real last name. Or you can follow me on Twitter. Lauren Fix. I have a blog and I put out a monthly newsletter and we'd love to hear any feedback from any of your listeners. It's always great to get get your questions and get them answered. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, Lauren, and I hope you see you soon, uh, maybe in the outdoor in New York. To, I look forward to it. Thank you very much, Thank Lauren. You. Pues ahí teníamos Lauren Fix, una colega, una gran, eh, gran periodista de la industria automotriz que no solamente sabe del periodismo, pero como ya lo dijo ella, fue eh, entrenadora de los concesionarios de autos para eh, y que tiene mucha información muy valiosa a la hora de comprarla, así que búsquenla ahí, le vamos a colocar la información en facebook.com slash auto 060 y se nos ha ido la hora rápidamente, estuvimos aquí hablando de los nuevos eh, estudios de satisfacción del consumidor a la hora de llevar el concesionario, los reviews del Hyundai Santa Fe, el Chevy Impala, los nuevos Top Picks del 2013 y eh, como para finalizar con un, con un broche de oro realmente esta entrevista con Lauren Fix de The Car Coach y, me, y muchos otros eh, eh, medios en los que trabaja y da toda esta información. Así que les agradezco su atención. Gracias también a DJ Cafa y en los controles que nos está ayudando con la producción del show. Y bueno, los esperamos en la próxima edición de Auto 060. Yo soy Javier Mota. Recuerden que nos pueden buscar en facebook.com slash auto 060. A mí personalmente me pueden seguir también en Twitter, arroba Javier Mota, y en el canal de YouTube donde pueden ver todos los videos que hacemos de todas las actividades, las pruebas de manejo con los autos nuevos. Así que los espero en la próxima edición de Autos 060. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.